Uh, yeah, with our fourth round pick, we took Royce Newman uh, out of Ole Miss. Excited about that and uh, open it up for any questions. All right, we'll start. Uh, Wes Hodquitz. Hey, John Eric. Um, obviously, the versatility stands out with him going from left guard to right tackle. What, what do you think allowed him to sort of be able to thrive in both of those roles? What does that give you guys? Uh, he's, he, number one, he's a smart kid. He's bright. Um, so that allows him mentally to, to kind of move up and down the line of scrimmage. And uh, he's got really good initial quickness, good lateral movement, uh, which allows him to play guard, also allows him to function out there at tackle. Uh, to your point, he's just a versatile piece. And, um, you know, we're really excited to get him. we got a good football player who can do some different things. So gives us some flexibility. MK Burgess. What was the biggest selling point for you when you looked at his film? There are a lot of versatile players now in the draft, but with him, what was the biggest selling point? I think it was the combination of the talent and the guy. He's a blue collar, tough, uh, like, I, like I mentioned earlier, smart. Um, and then again, when you, when you watch the tape, he's a productive football player. Um, and, and, you know, uh, I'm being redundant here, but, but a versatile football player. And I think anytime you can get guys on your football team that can do multiple things, it gives you flexibility. Uh, you know, especially when injuries occur. Um, so yeah, we were attracted to the, to the to the kid, to the makeup of the kid, the wiring of the kid, and then and then to the talent as well. We think he can play winning football at guard, at tackle. Um, you know, probably could you know even kick inside the center if, if that if that was ever needed. So, Steve McGargy. Just wondering, will he get his? Will he start out first at guard or at tackle or at the all? You, you know what we? I think we're gonna kind of let that play out. We'll get him with the position coaches and, and get him going. I, there's no need to try to pencil him into one or the other today. Um, but regardless where he ends up, we we feel good about it. But you know, I to, to I couldn't even tell you right now. I will get him with with Coach Steno and Luke Butkus and and let those guys figure that out. Whatever whatever they feel is best for the team. Tom Silverstein. Hey John Eric, uh, 24 years old. Where does that play in into the decision making and and whether he's more mature than you know the average guy and his you know how long do you expect him to be uh, viable? Yeah, I mean we think he'll be viable for a while. He's been a pretty durable kid there. Um, you know I'll be honest with you. I don't I don't think it factored in uh, one way or the other. Tom, to be to be perfectly honest, I mean he is. Uh, Certainly, still a young man. We don't feel like he's, you know, he's heading, you know, heading it off the cliff anytime soon. So uh, it is good to get a guy who's kind of got a little more life experience and maturity behind him, and he's definitely got that. So, uh, like I said, just attracted to the kid, attracted to what he brings to the table, um, you know, as a kid and as a player. So, Mark Daniels. Hey, John Eric, how do you scout that versatility? Did you have to see him playing a couple of games at a couple of different positions to convince you that he can move? Uh, it always helps, you know, when you see him do it live. Um, you know, he played guard in previous years, obviously played tackle this year. So, you know, we went back and did some work there. Pat Moore, who is our southeast area scout um, and does a, a phenomenal job as, as kind of an offensive line guy by trade. Uh, has, has watched him over the years and felt really good about it, which gave you know gave us some some peace and some confidence. Um, but yeah, it, it it always helps when you can go back and watch a guy actually do it. Uh, obviously, down there at the Senior Bowl, they moved him around a little bit, even kicked him inside the center. Um, so you know, between previous years of playing guard, this year playing tackle, and putting out good tape doing both, and then seeing him down in, in Mobile, uh, we felt good about what we were getting. Rob Domofsky. Hey, John, Eric, how uh, much of this with the offensive line going into this, this off season was not necessarily about just automatically finding starters to plug in, but just about giving yourselves options. I mean, you know, the last two drafts, now you've drafted five offensive linemen. What do you feel about that you have there in terms of all the options? Well, we like the options, you know, and I think like, you know, uh, Big, you know, big guys are hard to find. You know, everybody knows that. You don't have to be in the scouting profession to know that find, finding big guys that are that are worth their salt and can go play winning football. That's tough. That's hard to do. Um, we felt like you know we we needed to add some depth, add some competition. Um, we think you know we're really excited about the guys we got. We're really excited about the guys we already have in the fold that are that are already on our team. And the competition that it presents, and uh, we think we got a good group. We think we got some really solid depth. However, it shakes out with the starting five, and then the guys that can come in and play behind them uh, when needed. We, we we feel good about our situation. Bill Huber. 
Yeah, to, to you, uh, to use a Ted Thompson phrase, um, is this just the way it worked out as far as you guys have drafted four big school major program guys? Is that just coincidence, or is that kind of a, a goal in this draft? Uh, you know, as far as the – I think you always judge the talent. Obviously, it's easier to judge the talent when they're playing against premier competition. Um, I think, you know, all things even, we prefer to take guys from big schools that have played, you know, against um, – formidable competition but that's that's not always the case I mean we had some guys from smaller schools that we felt felt good that have already gotten gotten picked and you know it's really I think about the wiring of the kid um, the talent that's within the kid the athletic ability uh, the toughness the grit the smarts but uh, yeah I think you know to answer your question without sitting on the fence I think if all things are even um, you'd probably take the kid from the big school Brian Wood Hey, John, Eric, I totally get with his versatility. You don't want to pigeonhole him into one spot, but that, that's quite a radical transition that he went last year going from left guard to right tackle. What was on when you turn on the film the last two seasons, is there a spot where he looked more natural in or, or, or he handled it better? Maybe there's a little bit more of a learning curve at one spot to the other to the next level. You know what? I, I, I mean, and again, I'm not uh, I'm not dodging the question here. I, you know, I thought he played pretty good ball at both. I mean, I think from a dimension standpoint, you know, if you're pinning me down, you'd probably say, I mean, he's certainly long enough to play at tackle, so don't, you know, don't get me wrong. But I think from a d dimension standpoint, when you see him on the hoof, you'd probably say he's a better fit at guard. Um, but then you get you watch him play right tackle, and he, you know, he he's got good feet, he's got good lateral quickness, um, he stays in front of guys and, and and can you know mirror and sustain and and plays plays good ball out there, but you know. I, you know, if I, if I didn't know anything about anything and I just walked up on the kid and looked at his body, I'd say, you know what, that kid's probably an inside guy. An inside guy. But uh, I, if we had to go play tomorrow and put him at right tackle, I'd feel good about it. So We have time for two more. Aaron Nagler. John Eric, you mentioned his performance at the Senior Bowl. How much does that help kind of solidify your opinion on a guy? Because obviously you're, you're following their career. You've seen them throughout their collegiate career at whatever school they're at. But then the Senior Bowl and the Packers specifically seem to really value guys who go down to Mobile and perform well. It helps, you know. You, you uh, more than anything, you you watch how they handle themselves. You watch how they compete. Um, we thought he handled, handled himself down there well. He, he went hard every day. Uh, he held his own against some of the you know the better better players in college football. Again, he got to put his versatility on display. And I think you know my and this is my seventeenth year here and. I was not here with Ron, but if I'm not mistaken, you know, Ron Wolf was the one that said when you go to an all-star game, you can't, you can't hurt yourself. You can only help yourself. Um, you know, and I think, I think you kind of have to hold true to that. These guys are in a different environment. They're playing with guys that they haven't played with in the past, and you're trying to look for the positives, you know. And, and he went down there, and I thought he showed a lot of positives, and I think he helped himself um, not only by the way he played on the football field, but – you know, the way he competed, the way he handled himself, the way he interacted with his teammates. So we were we were very comfortable with the with the pick and with the kid. And last one, Mike Spofford. Hey John Eric, assuming you uh you met him in Mobile and or talked to him over Zoom over time, yep. what what was just your first impression of his personality as you got to know him? <laughs> he's a good kid. He's a he's a blue collar, kind of tough. Um you know, very personable, uh, got a good sense of humor, good wit about him. But, uh, yeah, I mean, he's a blue collar kind of about his business, um, just a tough, gritty, kind of your typical offensive lineman, if you will. I mean, I don't know if that paints the picture for you. Um, but certainly personable and, and intelligent and carries on a good conversation with you. But he's, he's your typical offensive lineman. He'll fit in good here.